farmers with no livelihood moving into the cities and that created all sorts of instability in Damascus. And as the climate changes and as certain regions become inaccessible for agriculture, we're going to see starvation, we're going to see rising sea levels in places like, uh, like Bangladesh that are already pretty close to sea level, huge refugee problems as we're seeing in Germany, huge refugee pro problems alter the politics of the country that is receiving those refugees. So this is pretty close to an existential national security threat. The problem is twofold. One, it's a slow burn problem, and has been a slow burn problem for a long time. We are finally, at great long last, getting to a point where most of my colleagues will A, accept that it is real, and B, accept that it is caused by man. Now, John and I tangled on this last night, and I think it's pretty darn important that we say it is real and it's caused by man, because only if we name the cause and understand the cause can we begin to fix the problem. So, what do we do? Um, we need to continue a lot of the little stuff that we've been doing along the way. You know, the much maligned stimulus program actually spent a lot of money to, to leap us generations uh, across across generations in technological innovation on things like battery technology, on clean energy. We are rapidly expanding our wind and solar power. We should keep doing all that stuff, but we need to do more. That in and of itself isn't enough. Uh, we had a bill uh, in my first two years called the American Clean Energy and Security Act, which was designed to do the thing that at the end of the day solves climate change, which is it simply accurately prices the full cost of burning carbon. And there's a couple of ways to do that. You can do it through a refundable carbon tax, you can do it through cap and trade. But until we do one of those two things, we'll be playing on the margins. The other piece of this that needs to happen, and the president took all sorts of uh, attacks from John's party on this issue, but the Paris Climate Agreement and his Clean Power Plan, which is both designed at the international level and domestically to migrate us away from the burning of carbon, which causes climate change, um, is really essential. Now, you know, he, that was quote unquote the war on coal. And not to belittle it, I mean, the transition is tough. There are communities that rely on the mining of coal. There are communities that rely on the burning of coal for, 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 for power. Um, but this gets solved when we finally, we, didn't, we almost got it done six years ago, uh, pass uh, legislation and encourage China, which is now the single biggest source of carbon uh, on the planet, to um, to move rapidly using market mechanisms, either tax, uh, carbon tax, fully refundable, or cap and trade, um, to really speed the migration globally away from burning carbon as a source of energy. We're almost at the end of our time. I have to be very well, I'll do my best. Um, yeah, I, we, did, we did have a nice discussion on this last time. This is an important discussion for me because a lot of folks may know is I'm the head Republican <clears throat> on the environment committee up in, in a, General Assembly. I also have an environmental law degree. So one of the reasons I got into public policy was to address this exact issue. Climate change is real. Everybody knows it. But the, the discussion we were having last night is what's been happening in DC is folks have been arguing about whether is it 5% man-made or anthropogenic or is it 95% man-made? I don't care. What I do know is man, us, have to change what we're doing. Because whether we're 5% the cause or 95% the cause, we have to stop whatever attribution our cause is, and there's ways to do it. A cap and trade model for carbon, you know, it sounds good. It's basically modeled on the old Sox Knox regime. So it's a sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxide cap and trade credits that was passed in the 70s or I think the early 80s that was basically geared toward power plants. So if, you're, if you were emitting the sulfur dioxide or, or, or nitrous oxide, you had so many credits you could pollute, you could trade them, it was a small exchange, and that was an isolated market that could be controlled and actually worked pretty well. We actually tried to do something like that in Connecticut and around here under the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. I went to those summits, I went to the, it, and we were all in, but it didn't work. Because everything that, everything that breathes, everything that burns, and everything that builds emits carbon. It is the wrong model for something that big. That being said, we still need to stop burning stuff. We still need to stop burning coal. We need to produce, renewable energy is the silver bullet. It's the silver bullet for our economy, it's the silver bullet for the world economy. And we should be pushing it as hard as we can. So but the issue is Jim says, we need to do this, we need to do that. And I agree, but who's we? Is it the government that does this or the private sector that does this? Well, I, I think we can actually probably partner with this to a certain degree. The government, what they haven't done, what we need to do, federal and state to a lesser degree, is have long-term production tax credits. I can't tell you how many continuing legal education, environmental law courses I've, I've gone to, I've 
a seminar in D.C. and Denver, all over the place. I represent clean air companies. I represent solar companies. I represent fuel cell companies. Every one of them says the same thing. The federal government changes the rates and rules every year and a half to two years, and we don't know what our tax structure is going to be. We don't know what our intellectual property credential is going to be. We don't know what to expect. So we can't spend the money as much as we would like to because we don't know. And the market's coming. Long-term production tax credits would help foment, would help incent production of renewable energy. No, I'm sorry, John, but I'm going to have to call a halt because the time is up and it's ready for our um, Thank you, sir. closing <laughs> <laughs> closing statements. Very good. All right. Um,